Hey guys, you're with Eugenie Den, and thank you very much for being here today. I appreciate you coming and checking this out and sharing my videos and all of the ways that you can do that. I always really appreciate that. And uh, any feedback that you have, please post it below or in any of the places that you can find me, which is always posted below. Please subscribe and uh, I will keep you in the know as much as I possibly can. And um, I generally put out videos Monday through Thursday for anybody who's paying attention to that. Uh, that's what I try to do. And then I usually work on my blog on the weekend. It doesn't always work out that way. I mean, I have three kids. Life is crazy. There's a lot of stuff that I'm into. So it just doesn't always work out that way. But I usually try to do that. Today, I'm going to put out a couple of videos. So look for the other one, which is about snacking. And um, I'm trying to talk about it in a way that's practical for a lot of people that and addressing the fact that the way that we snack is on really highly processed and unhealthy foods that contribute to really major health problems. And so I think that it's possible to take something that's really habitual and shift it away from being really unhealthy for us and take baby steps if that's what it takes to be able to move away from that take baby steps towards introducing even just one at a time little healthier things that still satisfy the craving or the want or the need and move us towards something a little bit better but if you've got to take baby steps then take them but don't um, you know get scared out of doing anything at all because you feel like it's all or nothing it definitely isn't you can uh, shift in little ways towards things that are more healthy and as you do that you will certainly feel healthier and better and that positive reinforcement works on its own to make to make things better for you and your family um, but I really want to talk about an article that I just read and I'll post it below it's about a UN rep who is here in Canada recently and looking at our food strategy and systems and um, what some of the major problems with that are and there are some pretty major problems and uh, they affect a really really large base of people and I mean I think that when I say that it's not just the people that it directly affects I mean as Canadians we're all affected by the issues that um, you know affect our, our neighbor there, there are always residual impacts for everybody, but there are about a million, um, a little under a million Canadian families who are currently living in a level of poverty where they can't even afford adequate nutrition. And as a parent, that scares me. I mean, to um, think about my kids living in that situation and having been in a situation in my life in the past where I had uh, very little to eat, I know that it's um, it's really humiliating, it's painful, and it's uh, terrifying not to know where your next meal is coming from. It, it's especially terrifying not to know where your child's next meal is going to come from. So um, I would really implore anybody watching this to look into what they can do in their community to get involved. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But um, this UN rep basically came in and said, Canada, you've got three major issues here. And that's that you've got such a large group of people who are living in a situation where they don't get adequate nutrition. The second issue that's connected to that is that inadequate nutrition is putting a huge amount of stress on your healthcare system. So you're investing a lot more money in that than you need to because of the inadequate nutrition faced uh, often very early in life but it compounds and causes problems later so if you invested to begin with you wouldn't have to fix the problem afterwards and the third problem is that the aboriginals in our country are uh, living their socioeconomic level is such that they are in many ways second-class citizens um, and and their nutrition is certainly not adequate in many ways, sometimes just because of where they're living in remote communities, but um, that there are larger issues tied to uh, cultural things that, um, that are causing real inequities there. And so those are sort of our big, our main three things. And, you know, the UN rep was saying that um, 
essentially our, our government needs to get on it at every level. We have to have better programs, stronger programs. We need to have more money in these programs, which I, I think is absolutely true. But that doesn't help me and it doesn't help you because we need to know what we can do. And um, I'm the sort of person, whenever I hear about an issue, I always think, but what can I do? Instead of sitting back and waiting for my government to do something about it or thinking that, you know, I'm going to send them a letter or I'm going to contact my rep or my MP or whatever and wait for something to happen. What can I do to really get active in an issue? And I think that that's important for you and I to know. So one of the things that you can do on your own time if you have it, and I would say if you've got time to watch this, you've got time to do uh, a little bit more and uh, look into food bank programs. They are not a solution to the problem, but they can help. They serve an immediate need and they get people what they need right now. And that that is definitely a need that we have to fill. But the other part of food banks that we can't underestimate is that if we invest in them properly, they can also be a tool to empower people and, and provide them with links to other resources as well and things that are going to help them build themselves up and uh, help better their day to day as well. So that's a really important part of food banks that we cannot underestimate. And there are also a lot of really interesting programs and I touched on this in another video and um, I just, I wanted to elaborate it on a, a little bit more on this. There's a place in Toronto that's called The Stop and I think I called it a, the store in the other video, but this place is called The Stop and it's a really unique initiative that I would really personally love to see more of. These people are not only a food bank, that's part of what they do, but it's by no means the majority of it because they also have a greenhouse, they grow their own food, they provide educational programs to people and they're trying to create a real sustainable um, food system for people in urban settings and to try and help people to rise up out of poverty, not by giving them handouts, but by helping them with the hand up. And education is an enormous part of that. Check out the stop, I'll put the link for that below as well. But there are definitely ways that you can get invested. It means sharing. It means that you need to start sharing a little bit of your time and volunteering for various organizations in your community and helping people to get attached to the resources that they need to make their lives a little bit better. It means sharing our money to those organizations and uh, with people who need it. And it means sharing other resources like education. If you have the knowledge and if you have access to a community garden or if you're farming or if you have a plot of land, these are things that we really need to share with fellow Canadians to ensure that nobody's going hungry, okay? Thank you very much for uh, watching. Again, I really appreciate it. I would love to hear your feedback and uh, check out the links below, please. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Check me out in all the various places that I am. And I'll see you again really soon.